Hi again, I'm Rose. I'll be your teacher today. Uh, it's good to see you back. Uh, the, this particular tutorial is for beginners of Loom Crochet, and we're going to go through the supplies that you're going to need. First of all, uh, the basic supplies is for any beginner level, and I try and make all supplies as cost effective as possible. Uh, so you, as you're learning, you might know whether that's particularly just for you or whether you would prefer uh, to take it to another level, then you haven't spent a lot of money on giving it a shot. And I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy this. Uh, now, first of all, you do need yarn. And that's what crochet consists of, basically, as you know. Uh, you can use acrylic or wool, whatever you have available to you. And it doesn't have to be a large quantity of yarn. One skein will work. I have turned these a uh, little my yarn into little cakes and I do recommend that you do use a lighter colored yarn to start with so you can see where your stitches are and exactly what you're doing you can use variegated you can use plain just make sure that it is a lighter yarn and for ply works the best to learn with now you also need string or cord this is what you're going to put on your loom to create the weave and if you've ever done any looming or know about any looming it's your basic start and it's called a uh, I just call it stringy yarn but it is called a warp technically but a warp just indicates that it's a string of yarn and I will teach you in the next video on how to put the string on the yarn but so the string you need is something that's durable, that doesn't stretch, and just has enough to create a tension all the way across. Now you can also use cotton yarn if you have that available. Just don't use regular yarn. Regular yarn tends to stretch and then creates a slack in your string. So this I got at Dollar General for a dollar fifty. It was perfect, and I'll probably get three to four projects out of that particular little ball of yarn, excuse me, ball of string. And you will also need a crochet hook because it is loom crochet. Now these you may already have. If not, they're pretty simple to come by. Uh, the sizes that I have available here are H, I, J, and K. Now, these are the easiest sizes to learn with, and these are U.S. sizes, uh, because you can uh, easily use them. They catch the four-ply yarn really nicely. So if you have any of these available to you, any of those sizes will work. And you also can buy them individually, or many times thrift stores have quite a few of them available that have been donated. So it doesn't have to cost you a lot if you don't happen to have one of these. And of course, there's always online shopping or your favorite craft store. Uh, the next thing you will need is a loom. Now, there's several types of looms. Basically, it's not really a type. It's a size of loom that you can use. It depends on how portable you want your craft to be. I'm going to move these aside a minute and grab another loom here. So the main idea to any loom that you use is that it has hooks, nails, whatever you wish to use on both ends and nothing at, it's only on two ends. So you can have it on two sides, you can have it on two ends. I have two examples here. This one has it on the ends, so it would make a like a picture frame look, a portrait look, because your string, your wealth, whatever you want to wish to call it, will go up and down. So basically when you're done with this project, your picture or creation would be this way. It makes a longer, narrow, narrower project. Now remember, if you say, I don't want anything long and narrow, you can always later on connect them. So if you had sort of like quilting where you have multiple blocks, 
uh, that you can connect later to make a bigger project. So that's something to keep in mind is it that way. Now on this one, it goes opposite. It goes from one side to the other side. You can see here, which means my project is done because I'm weaving across this way. Your your item will look this way. So it would end up looking more like a portrait, longer up than down, longer up than across, sorry. So you have your cross would be here, your up and down would be there. So let's say if I wanted a project that was roughly Uh, foot foot and an inch 13 inches across but I wanted it approximately this. let's try that again approximately 15 inches high that would be give me a 13 inch across 15 inch tall or long project so just keep that in mind it doesn't matter which one you use because you don't have to do the entire space. You can make it small if you want. Just don't use as many, go as far all the way up. And you can make it all the way up, but just halfway, whatever you want to do. In my first video, I showed you some pillows. Uh, the larger pillow was made on this loom. The smaller pillows were made on this loom and on this loom. I just went up halfway, took it off the loom, and then on the other pillow pillows, I've taken it all the way up and then just folded it over so I didn't have to make two, which is a little bit faster because you don't have to string two looms. So anyway, that's the idea there. This one you'll see has a double row of um, nails on it. Now these are homemade. Uh, my husband made them for me. The reason for the double layers is so if I wish to have a little variety somewhere within my weaving, I have an, another extra row I can throw in so it's not totally even. Now, if you do decide to make your own, there's many ways to do that. You can take a old picture frame that you maybe got at the thrift store, laying around the house, whatever, and if, as long as it's got a flat side, and good wood to it, good depth, you can put little nails in it to get what you want. Now, as far as the little nails are concerned, that I've, some people call these penny nails, or but they don't have a very big head. They just have a little tiny head to them, and they're not very big around in general. They're just small nails. So if you're good at that or know somebody that is good at it, you can make your own. And there's also... Uh, videos on YouTube on how to make them out of cardboard. There's all kinds of ways you can make it looms. But the main thing is that it have notches, hooks, or nails on just two sides, equal sides. In other words, if you're doing this end, be sure and go directly across to that end. That way you can string, put your string on there very easily. And it, it is not as hard as it sounds. And I will be showing it in the next uh, video on how to string a loom. So those are my two go-to looms that I always use. And the other supplies is a... Now you can also, if you happen to have a standing loom, that could be used as well. Just as long as you're working on two si putting your well for your string on two sides. It really doesn't matter. Um, also... The next item that you will possibly need is tapestry needles. That would be toward the end when you need to weave in ends. Now you can use two things, two of them, whichever. This is a common one. You can get almost anywhere. Just a plastic needle. And of course, it's safer if you have children involved or any young person you're afraid that might, you know, poke themselves. Uh, these are very economical. They're available almost in, in most stores. To carry any craft supplies at all or you can have your a needle 
of your choice. This one's extremely long. And this is actually a handmade needle. Uh, it was made for me so I could be sure and get the yarn through the eye without a big struggle. So that's the whole idea behind tapestry yarn is that it has needles. It has a large eye so you can get easily your yarn through there without struggling with it. That's the main thing. Just look for something durable and with a large eye. That's all you need on that one. Now also, uh, it sounds like a very common thing to know, but you do need a pair of good scissors. Now if they're sharp scissors, all the better. These are my go-to scissors. Keep them a little bit sharper than the rest of them. I don't use them on paper or I don't use them on anything else. Just yarn. Just make sure they move easily so your hands don't get tired. Uh, now the other next item that you will need is it's called um, basically it's called several names but basically what it's for is you need to be able to push one row down on top of the next row to keep it tight so it could be sometimes it's called a weaving tool sometimes it's called uh, a weaving comb, just whatever it works. Now, as you can, as far as what can you use to keep it cost effective, you can use a salad fork. This is a serving salad fork. It's got the main, it's got tines on it. You can use a regular fork if you wanted to, but what you need to be able to do is be get between your lines on your on your string. If it'll fit between your lines comfortably on your string, perfect. And it, this one is also handcrafted for me. It's a similar thing, and I just use that to push, push down with. You can use your fingers. That works as well. If you want to do, if you don't have any of these available or don't want to purchase them, use your fingers. I'll show you how to do that as we go along in our different tut tutorials. And I do keep a tape measure on hand, just a small, tiny tape measure. The reason being is if I am going to put pins in and create my own loom, the, we try, try and keep them all even, clear across. Now, just as an example, I'm just going to measure over here real fast. These are a half inch apart. So if you do end up creating your own loom, be it on cardboard, be it with nails, whatever, half inch is a good place to start. It doesn't overcrowd it, it's not overwhelming, and it will not give you a super, super detailed project, but that's okay. Until you learn, it's the basics are great, and you can always add, if you want it at one fourth, we'll just put a nail between one halves, and you'll have a one fourth. So it's just totally up to you, but this is a beginner set that I recommend. So we have our weaving comb. Now you could even use on the weaving comb an actual hair pick. That works also. We have our little tape measure. We have our basic scissors. We have your choice of crochet hooks. Whichever size you have open and available, that once again is H-I-J-K. I have two types of tapestry needles. Any needle will work as long as it's got a big eye where you can get your yarn through there without a struggle. We have string. Easy. Any string or cotton yarn will work. And we have our samples of yarn. So I want you basically to understand this is an economical craft. And as far as what size of loom, it's going to depend all on you. If you want a stand-up loom that isn't really portable, any size will work. It uh, doesn't have to be huge. It can be a small stand-up that fits on your counter or your desk just fine. If you're one of these people that likes to watch a movie and do a craft at the same time, 
uh, you can, I would suggest a smaller one. This one is like 11 by 13. It could be used on a lap. I've done it before on laps. And this one, if you want something totally more portable, is a lot smaller than that one. And let me take dimensions on that one real fast. Since I have my handy dandy ruler available. That is 16 inches long. And by 10 inches wide. I've actually taken that and if you've ever done the um, hospital thing where you have to sit, you know, you sit there waiting for your loved one to, to get healthier, uh, there's a lot of time in there. So these, that, this little one I've used for that and it works really, really good. It's really portable and easy to use. And I really hope you enjoy my video for today and thank you for joining me. And be sure and like, share, follow, whatever medium that you're watching this particular video on. And I, the next video in the series will be how to create a wharf, which is basically putting your string on a loom. And it, as usual, it's always been a pleasure, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.